Okay, what is going on guys? So in this video, I want to talk about how to create a revival in a church because when it comes to God, God can only work through men and women. A lot of leaders, a lot of people, when they think of revival, they think just some supernatural force is going to spawn out of the blue and boom, there's revival. It's a very delicate process and it all comes down to the person because God will send prophets. God will send servants. God will send apostles to buildings, to churches. That's all God can work through is men and women. So revival is a very delicate process. You have to be sober minded because revival could be gone just like that because it depends on the spirit. Are they patient? There's a lot of people sent by God that are imperfect. I'm imperfect myself. We're all imperfect. Perfect. We're just vessels, but there's a lot of people who come with good intentions to a church And there's a lot of people who come to a church with bad intentions and the people with good intentions Sometimes they're not as patient to where maybe the members or the leaders could throw some church hurt their way and boom There's the revival a lot of churches. It's filled with a lot of religious folk It's filled with just strict stern. God's got to be in this box. God has to be in this limit it, and this is what God is and then they just constantly pray for a revival They constantly pray that God shows up and then God shows up and they rebuke it And then they just constantly pray in this religious thing The Pharisees could not even recognize where God was moving But they were the ones that knew the word of God the most even though all the prophecies lined up You can see the fruits this kind of compassion this kind of love and this kind of power Hey, so that's the same exact way it is today There will be people who are so scholar with the Bible so experienced and they won't recognize where God is is moving because of lack of childlikeness and humility. I know leadership, especially in churches, having a position in a church, you're going to experience a lot of spiritual warfare. You're going to go through a lot of different things. There's a lot of dynamics when it comes to a church. A lot of people, they will go into a church, myself included, and they'll be like, oh, I can't believe this. And they'll throw in the towel. But you have to understand, like, if you really care for something, you have to be the potter. And a church is like some clay. If God is truly using you, you will stick around through the warfare, you will stick around through all of it to really just mold the clay because God will give you strength. If God has truly sent you and you're like, I want to see some change wherever you're sent to, you will have the strength to do so because guaranteed you will go through spiritual warfare, guaranteed you will experience church hurt, the Pharisees are the ones who killed Jesus, so guaranteed you will experience these things you have to understand that it's not gonna happen in one attendance it's not gonna happen in two attendances it's not just gonna happen in one go and with these religious folk they think we gotta be jolly we gotta be positive we gotta be upbeat and if it's not that then it's the devil and these religious folk it's really just a facade all oh, smiles and this but a real man and woman of god is going through the furnace of affliction is going up against supernatural powers is being tested all of these things are going on and they're truly up against so many different things so for you to be smiles 24 7 is just discernment in itself there will be trials you cry out lord use me expect trials next and expect a higher level trial than you ever had before lord use me in your anointing i'm ready i surrender everything i'm ready now i give everything you've just signed up for <laughs> the biggest trials you never even imagined before in your life i talk from experience <laughs> whatever we go through we have to grow through it's not an excuse to be like i've been going through so much so i have the right to be this way when you're with god you're gonna go through so much pruning and if you have been called to a church a church is a lot of pruning so just being a christian in itself you have a lot of tests a lot of trials this that and the third and then you go into a church that is some major pruning that is some major growth but if you're truly called to do such a thing you have to go through that furnace you have to go through the church hurt you have to go through the pain you have to give grace to the people in position because you have to understand how much warfare things that are on their plates this is why you have to respect authority even if it's not perfect 
perfect. Any church you go into, there's going to be something wrong with it. There's going to be issues. There's going to be problems. It doesn't matter what church you go into. Every church under the sun, you can find a problem with. Why? Because we are just vessels that are walking with Jesus and we are flawed vessels. But the difference is you continually accept the pruning. You reflect. You take time in the secret place because all of us are flawed and we're all going to have our moments. How do you have revival in a church? If you are called to a specific location and those are your intentions, anytime you're doing what God has commanded you to do, you're going to go through spiritual warfare. And not only that, you're also going to go through pruning. If you pray to God, hey, expose my impurities, prune this, prune that, it's going to be your outward reality that's really going to test you. He will test you through outer experiences, but it's your job to go through the furnace and to have self-control. And that's how God tests is through the outer experiences. When you're listening to God, sometimes it's smooth sailing, but then sometimes it's just like that Elijah spirit where it's just complete disruption. And you know it goes so far against the grain, but you're like, well, that comes from God. So I gotta be obedient. And it's not that you're disrespecting authority. It's not that you're turning a blind eye, not listening to people because you have to respect people because those are God's people. Even if they are in sin, even if they are fools, even if they're completely wrong, you have to respect God, but you also have to have God's voice triumph over everybody else. There's a very fine balance when it comes to revival inside of a church. You're going to have a lot of religious folk probably attacking you. They're going to think you're the enemy. You're demonic. Why? Because you're not all positive and jolly. You actually kind of have some righteous anger because it's like, man, another song, man, more worship, man, can we go? Like, there's just a lot of conviction inside of yourself to where a lot of people can think the enemy is working through you and you have to check yourself because the enemy can sneak in you have to be very sober minded and vigilant yes about the external but also with yourself you need a lot of secret time and you really have to decipher what you are saying and be careful with what you are saying but yes when it comes to revival in a church you are going to be pruned like no tomorrow so the enemy will work through whomever you how do you give access to the enemy well it says in the scriptures do not give a foothold to the devil. So how do you give a foothold to the devil? You sin. You're bitter. You're angry. You have resentment. You have all of these emotions inside of yourself. And then the enemy can use that person. If you have truly been sent by God, but listen, the enemy has truly been sent to take you out. And that could be in a church setting because there's a lot of religious folk. It even says in the scriptures, these people praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So a lot of people are playing church and the enemy can access those people. If you have truly been sent by God, sometimes it could be the whole church going against you. A lot of churches, they squeeze off the spirit because they're stuck in pride. They're stuck in titles, status, man-made tradition, routine, to where it's more so about, well, we want revival, but we want it through us. God, it has to be through me. That's why the spirit is shut out of so many different churches, and that's why churches fizzle up and they die, because people pray for revival. A person will be sent. God can only work through man and woman. The way you embrace revival, you test the spirit to see if it's from God. A lot of religious folk, they expect God to show up in this pretty nice packaging, boxed perfectly. We definitely have to be vigilant of who we listen to. We definitely have to have discernment for who we listen to because Satan masquerades as an angel of light, but you know, over time, people's true intentions will show. And that will be the case with you. You can't just walk into a place and be like, listen, this is what I want. It's just not gonna work. And if God has truly called you to do that, you're gonna have to be severely pruned. And even if you go through that, then you may have like a David and Saul type type of moment where the leaders, the shepherds aren't shepherding. They're actually being prideful and blocking off what God's doing. Like, there's just a lot of different things inside of a church where you have to be understanding of what the leaders are going through, but a lot of the times, even us, we can block off what God's doing because we have pride, we have arrogance, we have all of these things inside of ourselves. Even myself, it says, don't grow weary in doing good. And also, do not grow weary in your morals. Do not grow weary in transitioning. Do not grow weary in your development with God because I feel like this is an attack from the enemy. He will send tests, trials, the furnace of affliction to where you can grow weary. And when you're so weary, I feel like that's when the moment is and you can lash out and you can snap at the wrong person that God has sent you. How do you create a revival? So a lot of people, they pinch off that spirit due to pride. They see God moving and they say, 
say, ah, but not that person. People compare, people are jealous, people have pride to where you could actually miss it. If you're at a church and nobody's correcting, nobody's rebuking, you are in a dangerous place because that means God has left that place and he just doesn't care. If you're a leader and people are coming to you, correcting you, that means God has mercy. That means you're on the right path and God wants to help you with things that you're blind to and you can't see. And if you're arrogant, prideful, a know-it-all, I know everything, this is how I got here, then you're in a dangerous position because God will rise somebody else up to take your position. That's why you really have to be careful no matter how far up the totem pole you go. It's a dangerous place to be like, I know everything. It's a dangerous place to not have your ear open because God's not just working through you. God's not just working in people who are inside of a church. God can speak through anybody. God is not a respecter of man. If you're in a church setting or if you're in a place, you have to have grace for people because you don't know what they're going through because a lot of the times like the enemy will attack certain people to where they will have intrusive thoughts to go against the people they actually need to be uniting with. Division and separation is very common where the enemy will attack that person, feed them with downloads, feed them with thoughts to where they will attack somebody else that they really need that God sent them. But when it's spiritual discernment, you can really recognize that, yeah, that person has just fruits of untrustworthiness. But there's definitely got to be mercy for people. There's got to be mercy for people. We do slip up, but if we continue to just be narrow-minded, closed off, and we're not willing to change, we're not willing to transform, eventually that mercy, that grace, where off because sometimes myself included we can be ignorant to things and it's not because we're forcefully being ignorant and closed-minded it's just sometimes we're unaware because you have so many things on your plate so there's got to be mercy but also then again it comes with the territory let me just talk about revival so acts 9 31 the church then had peace throughout judea galilee and samaria and it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. Lord. The fear of the Lord is very important when you fear God because you're not going to be in pride. You're constantly going to be checking yourself. The fear of the Lord truly is the birth of wisdom because it's not about you. It's all about what the Lord wants. So when people are sent your way, it's all about what the Lord wants. Because if you don't have that and you're just focused on self, it can become about self to where you completely miss what the Lord is doing. When you become fleshly, when you become carnal, when you become so present but not spiritual, you can completely miss revival. There's only so much God can do. There's only so much people can say. And then God will be like, well, I've been whispering in that person's ear. I've been whispering in these members' ears for ever. And if you think you're just going to come in here and change everything, you're wrong. So a lot of people are sent to places, locations, and then eventually they'll just leave. And after that, they could pray for revival. And then they'll send another person. They'll send another person. Some people who are in leadership roles need to repent and need to ask for forgiveness because God is sending people. God is ushering people. God is bringing up people. And people in positions, they're not catching on. They're not shepherding God's people. They're actually rebuking, disrespecting, attacking. They're not helping aid God and what he's doing. They're actually just disrespecting God entirely. And I know it's due to ignorance, pride, the enemy attacking, spiritual warfare, all of the things we go through, but that's why it's important to not grow weary in spiritual discernment and doing good and fear of the Lord, all of these things. It's important to always stay on top of things. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. People will not go where they do not spiritually grow. That's why religious folk, traditional folk, routine-based churches will never see revival. They will only see crickets because they squeeze out the spirit. A lot of churches, a lot of people are fleshly. They're carnal. They see it as a job. They don't see it as a calling. For musicians, it's about talent, but not anointing. Knowledge, but not an anointing and the spirit is very important and you're like well how do we bring the spirit into the church well you need spiritual discernment hey that lady passionate for christ let's help develop her let's bring her in that's one spirit you're bringing in people go where they spiritually grow if you're like hey that lady's on fire for christ she has her hands up she's feeling on fire oh i got pride i got ego i got all of these things let's rebuke her that's one spirit 
out of the church that's gone to where it becomes fleshly, it becomes carnal, it becomes religious, and you can completely ruin a revival by rebuking one person. Now, obviously, you need spiritual discernment, and it has to be navigated properly. But yeah, the people with the spirit, the people who have that passion, who have that fire for God, it's important to bring them in. And when it comes to like the band that you have, they gotta be in love with Christ. They gotta have passion for God. They can't just be talented singing songs they don't really care about, they don't really feel, because it's all about the spirit. That's how you grow with church. It even says in the scriptures, and with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. And the reason being is because you can feel the power of God. It's something tangible that you can feel. You can feel it spiritually, but I can speak words all day, and if God's not flowing through me, it's just dry. It's just dead. Now, how do you get the spirit? Well, time in the secret place, spending time with God, being with God, being obedient with God, and also shepherding the people who are anointed, shepherding the people who are sent from God, based off spiritual discernment. But now, it's easy to say these things with words just like you know it's easy to be loving peaceful kind holier than thou in an isolated setting but the moment you get thrown into the real world you're going through all these trials and tribulations and god is really testing pride god is really testing ego god is really just testing you through everything then it becomes more difficult just like a church setting it's easy to spew words but it's another thing to actually take action there's also a spirit of people who just correct churches they complain and murmur about churches but they're not offering a hand they're not helping to mold. These religious folk, they don't understand. A lot of the times, things can be more ugly before they get better. People think, oh, it's God's building. Everything has to be perfect. Everything has to be amazing. No, sometimes there's arguments. Sometimes there's fights. We get frustrated. Sometimes things have to fall apart before they can be established. They have to fall apart before they can take place. Like, sometimes things have to be ugly before they can be beautiful in the way that God wants them. Why is that? Because sometimes you have to shatter the atmosphere. You have to attack you have to enforce change when it comes to a son if you spare the rod on your son you do not love him you have to discipline a child or else it's just going to be a disrespectful little child that doesn't learn and the same with the church if you let certain things slide if there's no changes if there's no shatter in the atmosphere coming up with new ideas actually enforcing change it's going to be still it's going to be dead it's not going to change if you're trying to take a religious setting if you're trying to take a traditional base setting if you're you're trying to change that to bring spirit in sometimes it's gonna be ugly because you're gonna be attacking that white rabbit demon that religious demon is real and it's in a lot of the old folks who are like oh no it's gotta be it's gotta be hmms and it's gotta be worship songs we need another worship song we need another this and god doesn't move in that way and that's demonic like sometimes you gotta go in there and you just gotta have that elijah spirit and completely just rebuke a church that's what elijah did he went into a church that was just teaching milk and he said no it's time for the meat which is the deeper spiritual teachings but they were not ready to receive but he went in there and he rebuked if that's what you've been called to do there's only so much you can do until you dust off your feet and you say this is not the church that's going to be blessed with revival this is not the church that's going to be spirit filled that's going to grow in numbers this is not the church it could have been the church but nope it's not the church and you have to du not in an arrogant way but there's only so much you can do there's only so much you could do but if you feel called to combat to attack to make change then just keep going through it. and you'll be pruned in the process you'll be disrespected attacked oh he's a he's a demon this thing that in the third but that also grows you so anyways that's all i have to say i love you guys i appreciate you guys and i'll see you guys in the next one bye